Welcome to another video of Genshin Impact Guide. Today we are going to build free to play Kazuha. No constellation, no 5 star weapon, just Kazuha and his C0 feelings. That's what we are gonna build today. He is one of the great support characters we have in the game. He can do everything in the open world. If you build him the right way. First, let's talk about his kit and how it works. That brings us to his talents. But these days, even game can tell you which talent you should level up first, but they can't explain why. This is why I am here. The most important talent in his kit is his element burst, and it works different ways. It depends on who you have in party, and who is your main damage dealer. His elemental burst can buff four elements, hydro, pyro, cryo, electro, if his element burst comes into contact with said elements, it will mix that element in his element burst, and it will give 61% additional element damage to that element. And it can only mix one element one at a time, that means his element burst cannot mix two different elements in it. Now, Follow if you look closely, you night. can see that Electro and Hydro are already there. But his element burst only absorbed Hydro. If there was only Electro, then it would have absorbed Electro. But if you have more than one element at the same time, then what his burst will absorb is random. Now I will show you how it actually works. First, we will mix Pyro in his element burst, and our DPS is Electro. So the damage is 61,000. This is the wrong way to use it. Now if you mix Electro in his burst, and your DPS is Electro, you will get 61% additional damage. So this is how it actually works. You need to mix same element as your main DPS. So your main DPS can deal extra damage. And it can only be Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, Electro. He cannot buff your Dendro and Geo in the same way. But that doesn't mean he can't work with those DPS. He works great with every team. We will talk about that later in this video. Now the second most important talent is his element skill. And it can even be used if you are flying, but that's for exploration. If you hold it a bit, then it will unleash greater enemy damage, and it pulls your enemy into it. Now this makes it a very normal skill, but his first passive skills changed everything. This passive makes it the same as his element burst level, but again, it can only buff Hydro Pyro Cryo Electro elements. And I will show you how it works. If you just use his element skill, then he can't buff your DPS from said element. She did 68,000 damage. Now, if we mix Electro with his element skill, your Electro DPS will deal more damage. It's 84,000. Because of his element skill, she did more 16,000 damage. So this is how his element skill works, just like his element burst. This passive can also buff your DPS in the same pattern I showed, but damage increase will depend on how much element mastery your Kazuha has. In simple words, every time he uses his element skill or burst, any element that is mixed will get more damage bonus, and that bonus depends on your Kazuha's overall element mastery. Last passive is good for exploration. It decreases sprinting stamina consumption by 20%. Now, let's talk about artifacts. At the moment, his best artifact set is Viridescent. You can't get a better set for him than this one if you are planning to use him as support. And it's very simple build. We give him element mastery as much as we can in artifacts. Sans Global Circlet, element mastery in every piece. And let me show you how it works. We will mix Electro in his element burst and see how much damage it can deal to this robot. To and I want you to look at the robot's health bar. And he did good damage. Now, let's try him with Inimo Damage Goblet and Crit Value Circlet. Just like normal DPS. Give him good crit value. We will change his sword as well. Now he looks like a good DPS. Not great but good. Again, I want you to look at the health bar of a robot. He did 12k on his single strike. But the robot's health bar was a bit lower before. His solo damage is increased, but his mixed element damage is decreased. 
Now, let's try him with a two-piece set of Gladiator with proper crit value. Again, his solo damage is increased, but the second element that is mixed into his element burst, that damage is decreased. For artifacts, you should go for a Viridescent set, and Element Mastery should be your priority. Because all you have to do is put everything in Element Mastery, your crit value doesn't matter. Just give him Element Mastery, and you are ready to go. Now, let's talk about weapons. Your weapon will decide what kind of playstyle you want from your Kazwa. There are a lot of weapons that he can use. This is his lore-wise signature weapon, but this is for DPS Kazwa, but nevertheless it is good weapon for him. You can use it if you don't have anything else, but you can not R5 it. It will stay on R1. It has good passive skills that help Kazwa a lot, but that's all it does. You can use a Lion Roar on him. It's a very good weapon for him, since his element skill and burst can absorb pyro and electro element, that makes it a good weapon for him. But energy recharge will be an issue in this one, since Kazwa needs a little bit of energy recharge, but overall, it is a very good weapon for him because of his kit. If you are going for DPS Kazwa, then you can use crit value weapon. These two weapons also have good passive skill, which makes them very useful for any character. Now you can use this weapon on him if you want. This or Iron Sting. Elemental weapons works very well on him, since they increase his element mastery. Like I said, your weapon will decide what kind of playstyle you want from him. Weapons like these will increase his support damage. Weapons like the Lion Roar and his Lore Wise weapon will increase his personal damage. Let me show you how it works. Now we have over 900 element mastery. That is a lot. Time to go. Fallen leaves. Adorn my knights. We used his element skill twice and his element burst one. And his element burst was not recharged, but he did great damage. Now, let's try him with a sacrificial sword. The same thing we did now. The element skill twice and element burst one, but his element burst is full. Of course, he did a bit less damage. But now you have more options. You can use element burst again. So this actually makes a big difference in the abyss. Let me show you. Illusion shattered. Clouds high. The birds come. One with nature. His element burst was full before it got over, and he used his element skill twice. Everybody stand back! Fallen leaves, adorn my knights! The wind knows me. with nature. Now again, his element burst is full while his element burst is going on. This sword makes him better. This sword's main point is not energy recharge but element skill cool down. Since you can use element skill twice, that gives more damage and more energy recharge for him. The more element skill you use, the more you can control opponents on the field. And it only took 54 seconds to clear. If you are thinking, why not Favonia's sword since it's better for generate element particles? Because energy recharge is not issue on him. I am using Sacrificial Sword because it can remove cooldown from element skill. And Kazuha depends a lot on his element skill. Now, let's try it with the Element Mastery Sword. Shine down. As one with wind and clouds. One with nature. Now the damage is more and his element burst is full too, but he can't control opponents. He needs to wait for his element skill to cool down. Everybody stand back! Clouds high. The birds call. There is no escape. 
If you are doing a biz every month, you know very well, each second counts, even though he is doing more damage, but it took him 61 seconds to clear it. Element Swords works very well with him, because it will increase your party member's damage more. Like I said, your weapon will decide what kind of playstyle you want from him. So you should decide that for yourself. Now let's talk about teams. He can only buff these elements, Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, Electro. But you can use him in every team because he can control the crowd with element skill. Because of that, he can mix with every team. As you can see, he increased their damage a lot. Ayato killed it faster because of that. What team Kazuha can play for depends on what DPS you have. If you have Xiao as your main DPS, then Kazuha can help him with his energy recharge problem. Because Xiao needs a lot of Inamo particles for his elemental burst, that's the main source of his damage. Just like his height, he is always low on Inamo particles. Now if you have Hu Tao, and you want to do 1 million damage, then first thing you need to do is give Kazuha 1000 element mastery. The more element mastery your Kazuha have, the more damage she will do. Now if you have El Haytham, then you can use Kazuha as crowd control because Al Haytham is also a close combat fighter. The more enemies are closer to each other, the more damage he will do with the Dendro element. Now the same with Deluk, just like Hutao. Kazuha can increase damage of Deluk as well. It just depends on you, what kind of DPS you have. Now if you don't have any DPS, you can even use him with another support player because his kid makes him very flexible. Let me show you how. They cannot deal one big number at a time, but they can deal many small numbers at the same time. These two have a lot of HP and they move a lot. Not only that, they have high attack damage. If you get hit three or four times, you will be dead. If his burst is mixed with pyro, then you can use hydro attacks to get more damage. This is why you can use Kazuha in every team. Of course, it took two minutes to clear it, but if you another great team, then you can clear it. Or maybe Aloy can solo it since she is the main character in a different game. Now this is how you can build your C0 Kazuha. It depends on you. Which way you want to build him. You can use him as main DPS if you want, but his whole kit is made for support. And that is a fact. So this is it for today. If you liked the video, make sure to subscribe for more Kenshin guides.